I would like to welcome you again and congratulate you on taking a step to become a Qt Quick user interface developer. Qt Quick is the latest user interface design technology from the Qt framework. It stands for User Interface Creation Kit. Qt Quick uses the QML language at the core, and QML stands for Qt Markup Language. Qt is a framework you can use to build cross platform applications. You can basically use it to target all these operating systems you see here the Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, Windows, Windows Phone, and many others. It was originally designed by these two guys, Harvard and Eric, and over the years, it got owned by these companies you see here. Today, it is owned by the Qt company, which is a subdivisory of DJ. You can read more on these companies by clicking these links here. Qt is a very powerful framework. You can see some of the companies that are using it. From this, you can have an idea of how good it is. You can see AMD here, Microsoft, Samsung, CMS, Volvo, and many other big names here. Down here, if you keep scrolling, you're going to see a few applications that are using Qt. You can see some Adobe products, Google Earth, Krita, a graphics editing and digital painting software, Mathematica. You are going to recognize this if you are a scientist. Keep going down, you're going to see VirtualBox, a powerful piece of virtualization software. You can see VLC Media Player. From this, I hope you can see how useful and powerful Qt can be. Now, I am talking about Qt here. Where does Qt Quick fall in? Well, Qt Quick is another application framework that is built on top of Qt with the sole goal of building fluid and dynamic user interfaces that can run on touch devices, mobile devices, and lately, it is being pushed even to desktop platforms, so you can use it to build user interfaces that can really run anywhere. And if you look in here, you're going to see that the QML syntax allows using JavaScript to provide logic, and it is often used for this purpose. So you can use JavaScript to add some interactivity to your QML code. QML by itself is a declarative language. And by now, some of you might ask, what is a declarative language? QML is a declarative language in that it allows you to describe how your user interface is going to look without going into the flow of the logic. And this is a Wikipedia link on declarative programming if you want to know more on the subject. If you look here, they say many languages that apply declarative programming attempt to minimize or eliminate side effects by describing what the program must accomplish in terms of the problem domain. In Qt Quick, the problem domain must be how your user interface is going to look. So we try and describe how the user interface is going to look, but we don't want to go into the details of how that is accomplished. The job of accomplishing that belongs to the QML engine that is built into your Qt framework. This is what they are trying to say here. You can read more on this if you are interested. To give you some context, if you were trying to put a few buttons in a layout in an imperative language that is not declarative, you would mix flow and uh, program logic. You see here we are adding widgets to the layout inside the loop, which is a control flow structure in C++ or any C-like language. So if we do this declaratively, like we do in QML, you see we define a component this is a column layout. It lays out things from top to bottom. And inside, we just stuff things we want to put in that layout, and we are done. We don't concern ourselves with how this is accomplished. It is the job of the QML engine to make sure this works. Okay, now you have an idea about Qt. You have an idea about Qt Quick. How do they interact? How do you put them together? Well, there are mainly two sides to working with Qt. You can develop your application completely in C++, and this is what we were all doing before they came up with Qt Quick. But the problem with applications developed with C++ is that they don't work well when you run them on mobile devices. It is really painful to look at the widget application running on Android or iOS. Another side is using Qt Quick, which is designed to build fluid and dynamic user interfaces that can run on Android, iOS, 
touch interfaces or embedded devices, or even desktop, you can use it to build desktop applications. And we're going to see that along the course. Now, Qt Quick also comprises two parts. There is QML, the language that allows you to build how your user interface is going to look. It allows you to build still and static UI components. And if you want to add some interactivity to your application, you're going to use JavaScript to do that. If you want to do things like responding to a click on a button and things like that, you're going to use JavaScript and we're going to see exactly how that works. Now, I want to bring to your attention that it is possible to communicate between Qt Quick and C++. And the recommended workflow to working with Qt to develop cross-platform applications is to write your user interface in Qt Quick and do resource-heavy things in C++. For example, if you are doing an image processing application, you can do your user interface in Qt Quick and take advantage of all the cool things that this technology has to offer. And you can do heavy things like doing operations on your images on the C++ side and pass the result back to Qt Quick to be displayed. I have to say, this course is solely on Qt Quick. We don't cover how you communicate between C++ and Qt Quick because we wanted this course to be equally useful to designers who are not interested in C++ and C++ developers who want to know how to work with Qt Quick. Now, you are probably going to see the terms QML and Qt Quick used interchangeably. Qt Quick is the overall technology. If you go down the stack, you're going to see that it contains QML itself. It also contains a QML API that we are going to use in this course. And it contains a C++ API that allows you to extend QML with new types using C++. QML itself contains the QML engine and the QML language. It is also important to know the difference between QML and C++ in terms of what is available to you, what can you use. QML is declarative, we just saw that in a previous slide, but it is also imperative because you can use JavaScript, which is an imperative language, to add some interactivity to our QML applications. C++ is imperative, you are going to see less debug information in QML, and C++ is a beast when it comes to giving you debug information. There are APIs for most Qt modules in C++, but QML covers only a few selected Qt modules. It is new compared to the C++ side of Qt, but it is getting there. We should also note that there are some APIs that are only available in QML. For example, the Qt Quick API, it is only available in QML, and that is one main reason why you need to learn QML, because you're going to take advantage of that. QML supports property bindings, a very important property that allows you to have your changes propagated to other properties. We're going to look at that, and C++ doesn't support that, and QML can be extended from C++. Okay, and the big idea is that Qt Quick is used to build your user interface and C++ takes care of the heavy lifting, doing resource heavy things and passing the results back to Qt Quick to be displayed to the user. QML has four main components really. It has nested elements, blocks, you can see here. This is what QML looks like. We are going to look at this, but you see we have an item here and these brackets here. Inside we have another rectangle item. Inside the rectangle item, we have another mouse area item. You see they are nested. This is what we mean here. QML has properties, things like X, Y you see here, width, height, color are properties in QML. You can bind properties together. We're going to see how this works in QML. And we also have signals and handlers. If you look here in the mouse area, on clicked here is a signal handler, and you can also emit or send signals in Qt Quick. Now, I have been getting this question a lot. How do you know the Qt Quick version to import? The Qt Quick version you use comes with your installed Qt version. For example, right now I am using Qt 5.11, and the Qt Quick version that comes with that is 2.11. Different modules that you import in Qt Quick are also going to have versions attached to them. They are usually different from the Qt Quick version you see. A good way to find out the version that you might use is to search for the element in the Qt documentation 
and they are going to show you the import that you can use. For example, you can search for rectangle in the Qt documentation, and they are going to show what you would need to import to be able to use that component in your QML code. I want to talk about what you need to bring in this course to be able to take advantage of it. First off, you need to bring in an open mind and a willingness to learn the stuff we talk about in this course. It is really not difficult. All you have to do is follow up the demos, do what I do, and try to bring in your own changes to try and understand how things really work. It is also going to help if you have an eye for design because obviously we are designing visual stuff. QML is a completely new language, so you don't really need to bring in any other skill. But if you have very basic programming skills, if you have worked with things like CSS and HTML, and if you have some basic understanding of JavaScript, things like control flow, if you know how to work with ifs and elses, if you know how to work with loops, you're probably going to be fine in this course. But the most important thing is to have an open mind and be willing to spend some time to learn what is presented in the course. Okay, how to make the most out of this course. I just said it, you just have to follow up with what I do and try to write the code yourself and see how things work for you. This course is very practical. We are going to spend most of the time in the IDE writing code and trying to get things to work. If you get stuck, try to compare your code to mine. The projects are going to be attached to every lecture and you can easily download that and look at what I tapped or even try to run my project and see what is not working for you. If you still can solve the problem, you may search in Google with the error that you are seeing in the IDE. And this is mostly going to lead you to somebody who had the same problem as you and you're going to see their solution and apply it. If after this, you still can't solve the question, this is a good time to jump to the community. Udemy itself has the QA section where you can post your question and I'm going to try to answer to the best of my abilities. We have also set up a Facebook group dedicated to helping students learning about different Qt development topics. We talk about C++, we also talk about Qt Quick. So if you have a question or anything you want to share really, please go there and post and share with us. And by the way, this is a good time to post the video, go to Facebook and like that page so that you have updates from other students to try and learn from each other. Okay, this is all for the introduction. In the next lecture, we're going to download and install Qt and Qt Creator and set up our host development environment. I'll see you there.